Hey there, Sharon Hornelstrom here, also known as Pajama Grandma, and actually one of my favorite pairs of pajamas. I even have pants to match. Oh, ignore my pink fuzzy slippers. My feet get cold in the morning, so I always have to put on soft fuzzy slippers or soft fuzzy socks. And my slippers are upstairs from letting the puppy dogs out, and so they get a little um, snowy on them. It's snowy in Wisconsin this time of year. So I just grabbed some pink fuzzy socks today. They do not match. I, I don't always care about matching. I think. I am not one of those matchy matchy women or girls. I mean, I don't worry about those things, and I never have. I wasn't as bad as my younger sister. I had a younger sister who would, uh, she would get up in the morning and she would grab, uh, you know, underwear, socks, pink shirt, put them on, whatever. She would just grab the first one she could out of the drawer, and you know, heaven forbid if my mom didn't put them in an order that they would all match because she would have some of the funniest outfits on. I wasn't quite that bad. Um, I would take a little more time to at least, you know, find semi things but now as I've gotten older I'm like more about comfort and less about does it matchy match and do I really care no one's seeing my feet except for I did just show you uh, for the most part so it doesn't matter and guess what my four-year-old granddaughter does not care if my footy slippers do not match my pajamas or my robe anyway fast challenge I called this one today why did I call it a fast challenge because I realized yesterday that even when I say I'm not doing challenges I'm doing a bunch of challenges Yesterday was the last day of a 10-day challenge um, about your audience with Iva Padanovich or something. I can't remember her last name. I'm sorry, Iva, because it was a really good challenge. But it was the 10th day of that, so I was doing that. I started yesterday a 48-hour fast because somebody I'm in a pod with for LinkedIn um, was videoing about how he's doing this 48-hour fast with some friends of his, some really supportive friends. Now these guys are all, I believe, in the um, spirituality. No, he's a he's a wisdom coach. He's an awesome guy. I love him. Just ran across him. I never knew of him before. Um, but he hangs with people that are really physically fit and healthy, right? Well, I don't think I can call myself physically fit and healthy right now, especially after, you know, like a three or four week bout with the silly old flu and cold and sinuses and all the nonsense that comes along with that. Um, so, as he was posting about his experience, because he's finishing it up today, I was like, oh my God, I should do that. I should just give my body a chance to reset and recharge my batteries. Because, believe it or not, fasting does recharge your batteries. At least it recharges my batteries. It just gets me to stop doing all the mindless things like mindless drinking and eating and going to the fridge, which is really procrastinating. Because if I'm going to the fridge or the cupboards or the pantry, it's not because I'm really hungry. It's usually because Number one, I'm procrastinating or I'm avoiding doing something that I should be doing instead. Or I'm just distracting myself from front, some from some other thing or feeling that I don't need to be doing. So I thought, well, heck, I, I'll do that too. So yesterday was day one of a 48-hour fast. 48 hours is only two days, right? You sleep for, let's say, at least 10 to 16 hours of that. So it makes it pretty easy, right? If you, if you chunk it down and you take it backwards, it makes it pretty easy to do. So I'm like, well, I can do a 48 hour fast and that will kind of reset my system. So the 10 day challenge, the 48 hour fast, the 365 day fun challenge. And then I came across over the weekend, I saw a video from Mel Robbins about a 30 day um, dream, what's it called? Best decade, best decade ever challenge. She's doing a 30 day best decade ever challenge. So I'm quick trying to sneak in all the other things I'm doing and, and listen to her lessons and do that challenge as well. So I actually just did, uh, I did day one homework this morning when I woke up because I, I'm trying to catch up. So, but I listened to, I think I listened to or did three or four days worth of lessons and then day 11 and 12 because that's when I started and then I'm, I'm coming back. I guess they're in week three already. They had a, a preliminary week. I think kind of like the One Funnel Away Challenge is set up. They did a preliminary week. Then now they've got a month of lessons. So they must have done something in, in January, in December that I had no idea about. And like I said, I didn't even catch or I didn't even find it until what's the date today? Well, heck, this is the third week into it. I don't know how come I'm just getting day 11's email. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm doing another challenge. And I, I like this one. It's really fun. It's about having your best day ever by dreaming bigger. Dreaming bigger than we ever thought possible. So this whole for the whole first week is about dreaming big. So it's kind of fun because I think all of us tend to limit ourselves with all of our beliefs. We have all these beliefs and experiences that we set ourselves up that I can only do this much. And I know I definitely have been living really, really small for, you know, the last 40 years probably. 
<laughs> so it's time to, to bust out of my shell and actually be who I really am. And it, it's time for you to do the same thing as well. So challenges, fast challenges. To me, fast challenges is a, you know, anything I consider five day challenges, fast challenges, right? Any five day challenge. And a lot of people really struggle with a five day challenge. A lot of people struggle with committing to themselves to do something for themselves to get a result that they really, really want for even five days. To me, that's pretty scary, but maybe that's because I've had to face so many challenges and so many up uphill battles in my life that it's just become inherent in my nature. It's just a natural process for me. Uh, so yesterday I was working on um, building team, but I actually didn't get much done on that. I'll be perfectly honest. I did almost nothing on that yesterday. I thought about a couple of people to contact, but then I had to list my house on Zillow. I think I've mentioned that I am finally getting around to selling my home, um, the, the family home that I had with my kids and my ex-husband and everything. I've been divorced for, geez, probably five years now, but just getting around to moving on, letting go. I, I maybe have a little bit of problems letting go of stuff, right, and moving on. Uh, so I'm getting better about that in 2020. My vision is getting clearer. Um, not bad for a blind lady, right? My vision's getting clearer. I wish that might go on my dream big list. I have 2020 vision. I can see again. That would be awesome, right? Uh, I think you don't appreciate things until they're gone. I I know I didn't appreciate my vision and the beauty around me and, and being able to see it clearly until I haven't been able to see it clearly. And that's so true of everything. We don't appreciate people and relationships until they're no longer in our life. We don't appreciate... Um, sometimes uh, situations and things until they've they've passed us by and that's just it's a learning experience it's just natural course of things I guess so today was about giving up the ghost so I have some personal experience with giving up the ghost and of course that means to die or to stop running or stop working it's actually from the Bible so it's been around a really really long time anything that's been around for 2,000 years is going to probably have affected us or people around us. And so it was all about, um, I talked about the importance of letting go of things that no longer serve you. And why? Because I really need to do that, right? I need to be an example of letting go of things that no longer serve me. Instead of hanging on to, to physical things and relationships and habits and emotional things that no longer serve me, I need to let those go. And if I look back at my life, not to commiserate or live in the past, but if I look back at how have I dealt with things like this in the past, I haven't been actually very good about letting go. Uh, I hadn't been with my husband for like five or six years before we finally actually went to court and got divorced. Then it's been another five years and I'm finally moving out and, and transitioning and letting go of our house, right? Our family home. Uh, so I think that I have some personal development to, to do in the area of letting go. I will tend to continue to do projects and strategies and run businesses and stay in jobs longer than I should. After I know that I'm done doing everything I can do there, I still usually stay another year. In, in corporate America, I would do that. I'd stay another year and then I'd be like, okay, I've got this all set up, automated, systematized. These people can do this without me. I need something else. I need another challenge. But I would still, after I had it all set up, I'd make sure it ran smoothly for like a year, and then I would move on. You know, that, that year, nobody needs to stay. I never, that was like an extra year I didn't need to be there, and that I could have been moving on to create other things in the world for myself and my family and those I love and care about. And, you know, maybe just to make the world a better place. So I would say... I definitely need to work on letting go. So maybe as part of this dream big challenge or one of the other challenges I'm doing, I will personally learn better ways to let go. Now I've done a lot of work on letting go things, letting go especially of negative emotional events and trauma and dramatic things and things that make me feel bad. I've done work on that, but even that obviously hasn't stuck. I think that we expect our fears and our, our limiting beliefs to go away permanently but they don't, they, they don't necessarily go away permanently. I suppose for some people they can. I guess if I believed that they could, they would. But so far I haven't let myself, that's really critical. I have not let myself believe that they can. I do think we can change in an instant. I totally believe that. We, our lives, I know from personal experience, our lives can change in an instant. In one instant, we no longer exist on this 
in this planet. I, I personally believe we continually exist as a being, but our physical body can cease to exist instantly. That's why I know we can make decisions instantly. We can make quick decisions and and then we're always making decisions and dealing with the consequences or we're choosing not to make decisions and dealing with the ramifications of what happens because we did not be proactive and make a choice. Um, so I guess that's all I got today. Uh, 48 hour fast is going to do that today because you know I always got to have some challenge going on even though I've already got like four going on. <laughs> and then I will be I'm working on my program and my team so I can launch um, my next challenge. I might I don't, I, I don't want to do my challenge until I have my program ready. And I, I, I'm, it won't be 100% ready, but I want to have the offering mapped out and the audience set and started to build. Now, I am I will tell you, I'm thinking about doing this on my, I have a Thrive Challenge page and a Thrive Challenge group, or on my Be Me to Thrive. I can't remember if it's a page or a group. If it's not a group, I want to do it in a group. So I want to have a page in a group. And I've got, you know, I've done a lot of stuff over the years. And so I kind of want to use or start off in an existing platform. And I'm thinking my Thrive Challenge one, since it's a challenge and I want people to thrive, um, might be the page to use that for. Now, I'm not going to call it the Thrive Challenge. Um, although I could probably call it the Live Thrive Challenge, right? I could do a Live Thrive Challenge. Uh, maybe I will do that. Okay, just thought of that. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do a Live Thrive Challenge. And then I can do it on my Thrive Challenge page and group, right? And then I can, you know, I, I hate this when people take the information up and, and or take it away. But I think, I get it, I get it, I get why they do it. I, they do it so that we can help people make a decision, right? Because it's human nature to not make a decision, not make a choice. So if I just offer something and the information for a small amount of time, hey, you've got 10 days to consume this data. And I do like that better. I learned this from Kelly Roach and Eva did the same thing because she's in Kelly Roach's program. Um, they have a 10 day challenge five days is the, the core of the challenge and the rest is bonus material and mostly selling right the last five days are mostly bonus material and selling so and I liked Iva did it Eva Eva Iva whatever I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce her name I should know I think it's Eva even though it's spelled with an I Eva uh, did it um, I think even even better than Kelly but I'll admit I didn't watch all of Kelly's bonus days. I didn't watch all the days. So uh, maybe she did just as good a job, but I'll, I'll watch it next time. She's got it coming up again February 3rd, so I'll go through it again. Um, and just listen and participate uh, while I'm doing my own thing. I'll probably have my own challenge going almost simultaneously, if not the same time. I might delay mine by a week and start the... I don't want to wait that long. The 10th. I gotta look at it. The 10th. I might start the 10th. We'll see. Uh, and delay it by week but I like the way they set it up where it's five days of that and then five more days that it's open so it's it's open 10 days and you've got time to go back you can miss a day and still go back and catch up I missed Saturday of um, the your audience launch pad or something I can't remember what you call their challenge but um, I missed a Saturday so I went back and listened to that before it expired Tuesday now they all expire then the week and the, those videos all go away so I'll check that out today and see exactly how she did it and took things away, uh, which I think I already know because I've done that. But I usually, when I personally do a challenge, I do it, I put it up, I leave it up there forever. Now, does anyone ever find it? Only if you know me and you know where it is and you know how to go about finding it. I've got dozens and dozens of challenges that I've done over just the last couple of years that are now online. They didn't used to be online um, because I wasn't in the online world. I, I did everything offline. And so they weren't necessarily online. I had, think I had... Before the last couple of years, I did some stress challenges on my blog, on an old blog that I have. And so it's possible to find those, but you'd have to really look and search to find them. So that's why I just put everything up and leave it up. The internet is such a vast, huge place. I don't feel like it's um, it's bad to keep them up. Now I do get, you take it down so that people will make a decision, so that people will actually set it as a priority. and. We're all so busy. If we don't schedule time and, and make time for things, they won't get done. So I get why people are doing that with their challenges. But I remember the first time I was in the uh, ClickFunnels 30-day challenge and they did that, I thought it absolutely sucked that they took all the 
the information down because there's no way you could do that challenge and get through and do everything the one time, the first time. Now, I've been through that challenge, I think, four times, and now I'm in ClickFunnels, so I get it. I get access to it every time they do it, you know, they, and I think they're doing it almost monthly, but I've been through it four times, so I really don't need to go back and listen, and most of it's all recorded now, so I definitely don't need to go back and re-listen to it. I think it is all recorded. I don't need to go back and listen to the recordings. Now, I can go back, and I could listen to some of the coaching, and the, I think they've added live coaching, so I could listen to those and, and hone in on those, but after the first couple times through, people's questions are always the same. You start to see the pieces and the gaps and the holes and what's missing, and, and you just fill those in. So you don't need to listen to those all the time either. Um, but I guess it's available from that standpoint. And now that I joined their program, I have access to it all the time. And that's for sure what I'll do with my program is um, if you join me in my program, you have access to everything and everything that all the challenges and things that I've done in the past because I think it's really valuable. And you can pick and choose and you can go back and listen to the things that you need because there's too much information out there in the world for us to 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 try to learn everything. And I've spent a couple of years, today's day 724. I spent a lot of those 724 days doing things, just learning things and learning and trying to figure out and get a grasp on the big picture. And a lot of all of that that I've learned, it's all been valuable to me and it's put me in a really good position to add value to people going forward. But most people don't need to do that. Most of us can take a much more direct path to get the results we want. We don't have to learn all this stuff to get the results we want. I didn't need to become a certified partner for ClickFunnels to get the results I want out of ClickFunnels. I thought I did, and that's why I joined it, and, and I joined it for other reasons as well, but uh, that was a big investment in money, not the money so much as the time and energy and effort that it took to learn all that material and become a certified partner. Uh, worth it, absolutely, to me, but to most people, absolutely not. I would not recommend, they don't offer the program anymore, but if they did, I wouldn't recommend it to hardly anybody. It's only appropriate for a certain segment of people. And really, it wasn't what I needed. I needed something different, but that's what I thought I wanted and needed at the time. And I've done that with a lot of things over the last couple of years. And so I wanna make sure that going forward, the people that I work with don't feel like they have to do that. They can pick and choose and they only, my philosophy now is only learn the next thing you need to do and learn to move your business ahead. And a caveat to that is, if there is someone else who already knows how to do that piece, you don't have to learn it. Just find someone that can do that for you, get it done for you to get the result you need and want, and then only learn the things that you want to learn, you love to learn, that are in your genes. So, so that's it. That's all I've got today. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will be fasting today. If you have any sage words of advice for me on fasting, throw those in there too. I found keep busy, drink plenty of water and plenty of fluids, um, and keep the fluids coming. Take your vitamins and not that bad um, and it does help me realize okay how many times am I getting up walk into the fridge when I don't really want anything I'm not really hungry I'm just kind of bored or wanting to take a break or wanting to avoid something sometimes I just need to get up and move around well I can get up and move around without having to go to the refrigerator or the pantry right absolutely bad habits all right have an awesome day catch you tomorrow